Hello and welcome to Mini Age Painting. Today, I will continue to paint through my Heathen Knights of Slanesh commissioned army. This time, it's the Lady of War, the Keeper of Secrets. This model was purchased assembled from the Rage Quit section of my local hobby shop. Now let's jump into it. Starting with the airbrush, I will work on the skin tones. I will mix Celestra Grey and Demonite Hide in a 1 to 1 ratio. This was then applied all over the skin. The model had many mold lines and a few holes where the model wasn't built properly, but I could fill them in with some clever melting and gap fill. I airbrushed some pure Celestra Grey onto the skin from about a 45 degree angle. I wanted to make sure to leave some of that first color in the recesses of the skin. The next step was to take a 1 to 1 mix of White Scar and Celestra Grey to the topmost portions of the skin. This meant about a 15 degree range of application. Next I will take some Magus Purple contrast paint and spray this onto all of the skin. I am doing this because the demonettes I painted for this army also have purple tinted skin and I wanted army cohesion. A final step for the skin was to spray some Saish purple into the bits of hide that appeared near the claws and on her back. With the skin done, we can move on to other parts of the model. We are going to start with the flowing robes with some corn red. Be careful not to hit the skin we just spent so much time working on. The next color will be a mix of Abaddon Black and Corn Red. About a 2 to 1 mix was used for the deeper folds of the robes and the inner parts that won't receive light. We will shade it further by adding more Abaddon Black in with the previous color to get a deeper shade. Now I'll take some of that original Corn Red and bring back some of the highlights to the higher points and edges I may have accidentally hit while shading. With the robes complete, let's get to that dark leather. Starting with a bat in black, I will paint all of the leather on her torso and the tassel hanging from her waist. Let's add some dark reaper to the black and paint this over the leather. I want to cover most of this in this step but leave the recesses a pure black color. Some pure dark reaper was then used to highlight the leathers. And with that, we're finished with the leather. Moving through this rather quickly, let's take some Jean Steeler purple and apply this to the stockings in about four thin coats in order to get nice smooth coverage. I'll also apply this onto the hanging cords and ties around the model. All of the metals of the model will get a solid base coat of lead belcher. This is a nice and easy way to do all of your metallics, as adding different shades can easily get you to gold, bronze, or any metallic you want without needing extra paints. I'll also paint this onto any of the small beads that hang from the cords that we painted in the previous step. Speaking of which, we are going to take some Iand in yellow to the lead belcher in all of the places where we want there to be gold. Up next, I'll take some Druki violet and apply this to the stockings and all of the silver minus the cord beads. I used two coats of this on the shield to get a stronger color near the center as opposed to the outer edges. I broke out the Saish purple again and tackled the head of her spear. I wanted this to have a bit more visual difference than the rest of the silvered parts of the model. In this same step, I took more Iand in yellow and painted the connecting balls of the spear hilt. With that drying, I asked for feedback from the commissioner and they wanted the horns to be golden with black caps. So I painted the horns with lead belcher and then I ended in yellow to match the other instances of gold. 
Now it was time to work on the claws and hooves. I painted a 50-50 mix of Dark Reaper and Abaddon Black onto these parts of the model. I also painted the horn caps with this color. Once that was done, I took more Saish Purple to the textured hide around the claws. I also put some of this onto the blade of the claws themselves. Once that dried, I took some pure Dark Reaper and did some edge highlighting on the sharp edges of the horns and claws. Almost done with the model. Let's take some Slanesh Grey and glaze this onto the higher portions of the stockings. All of the highest edges that would catch the most light. But that looked too bright for me, so I took some of the original Jean Stealer Purple and glazed that over the grey to make a more fitting color. The grey under this purple gave it a brighter color than the Jean Stealer would have had normally. Now it was time for the hair. Emperor's Children was chosen for this step and then applied in three thinned coats for smooth coverage. Volpus Pink was applied to all of the fingernails on her hands and then the same color was watered down and applied as a shade for her hair. With that, it was time to work on the base. I wanted something similar to the Triumph of St. Catherine for the base, which meant building it up with some cork board. I took my calipers and got the size of her hoof to use as a base for how long the steps should be. Her foot was about 10 millimeters, so I made the step 20 millimeter long. Cutting the step and gluing it to the base meant it was time to mix some milliput. I didn't need much of this as a little goes a long way. So I'm going to work on this and then get back to you. Flattening out the milliput with the lid of some modeling compound, I spread this over the cork. I then took my modeling tools and wet them with water to begin sculpting some bricks. These are going to be fairly large and I'm not too worried about how big the gaps are. I'll fill them in later. I also dampened my hands a lot and smoothed the tops. After giving it a day to dry, I grabbed some sandpaper and sanded the rough edges to make it look more flat. I then glued some skulls and rocks onto random spots around the base, just to give it some added flavor. After spraying the super glue with some quick set, I took some PVA glue and spread this around the base and in the cracks of the stones. Sprinkling sand will give me the base for the ground that will go here. Putting sand in between the rocks will mimic grout. We just have to wait for that to dry and prime it. Airbrushing will be done to save some time. The first color will be Mechanica's standard gray for all of the stones and rocks around the base. Next, I sprayed the sand with some Morn Fang Brown to give it a dirt-like color. A final light spray of white scar was applied to the tops of the stones and rocks. Switching to a normal brush, the skulls were picked out with some wraith bone. Now it was time to paint that stone. Taking some Basilicanum Grey, I applied this all over the stones. I then took some Black Templar and applied this to the grout between the stones. Taking some flock bushes and underbrush, I glued these on in random spots around the base of the stones and around the rocks. Dabbing some PVA glue around the base, I was able to glue down some static grass in order to complete the look. I then had to brush off the grass that was sticking to the stones, as it wouldn't do to keep that here. Now it's time to glue on some pretty blue and white flowers. 
These were glued down in spots that I felt could use some more color. Shading the stones was done with three colors in random swatches. The first was Nuln Oil. The second was Agrax Earthshade. And third was Athonian Camo Shade. With that done, it was time to black rim the base and get ready for the grand reveal. Thank you all so much for watching. This was a blast to paint, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Please like if you enjoyed it, comment if you have any ideas I should try out, or tips on how I can improve, and subscribe for more of my content. Your subscriptions help me immensely, and I can't thank you all enough. Until next time, I've been Miniage Painting, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.